Hi, this is a Blender 90 tutorial on camera mapping using Blam in Blender 2.73. If you create a simple scene which has a Suzanne at the world centre, put one back in the distance and then create a simple plane, extrude the edges up, make your lamp a sun lamp and leave a camera in the scene. Once you've done that, go into user preferences, make sure you have Blam enabled. If you don't, the link is below. Once you've installed Blam, go into your tools tab under miscellaneous, you'll see photo modeling tools. Go into your end panel, which is your properties panel. Under your background images, tick to enable it, click add image, and navigate to the image that you want to work with. The image in this tutorial will be provided in the link below. It's from Stock Exchange. Once you've loaded your image, make sure it's in all views. Click one to go into your front view and set it to wireframe so that you can see what you're doing. More or less, just move the view kind of where you want it. Then hit Control Alt Zero to lock your camera to that view. Scale it up. In your view settings, hit lock camera to view and just move your camera down just so the grid's more or less in the position you need it. You can also scale out. With that in place, unclick lock camera to view so that you're not manipulating the camera because you need your camera to lock. Position the objects in the scene where you want them to be just to make the scene more interesting. Select your main monkey object and add a new material and simply give it a glossy shader with a tiny amount of roughness. Next, go into your world settings, hit use nodes. Under the settings, make sure you've got multiple importance and homogeneous and map size to 124. And then click this button here, choose environment texture and navigate to where you have an HDRA map that you would like to use for your environment. The one used here will be provided in the links below. Now go into render view and have a look at your scene and you'll see that your objects are in the scene. Switch to texture view, select your background object, go to your photo modeling tools and then choose project background image onto mesh. Under your material, this is now put a camera map material onto your, onto your mesh. Open up your timeline and switch to your node editor and you'll see there are no nodes. If you click here on use nodes, you'll now see that you have nodes. And if you shift A and add an image texture and simply link the image texture to the background. You still won't see it until you choose the map. Now you'll see that the image texture is locked into the scene. Now in your scene you'll see that the road has some slight distortion on it and that's because this, this geometry is too simple to hold the mapping coordinates properly, which we'll fix later with a subdivide. Go into texture mode, select your, your background object, hit tab, go into edit mode and choose your the vertices to reposition outside of the camera. You can zoom out providing you're not in lock camera to view. And it's a good practice to move your geometry on global axis points. It just makes it slightly more efficient. If you've hit zero to come out of camera mode and look at it from any side point, you can see that there's quite a lot of distortion. To correct this, go into wireframe mode and go into edit mode. So we're just gonna select the two top vertices and just move them back slightly. And we're gonna move them up so that they're basically on a slightly inclining plane that will help with the light. We now come back into object mode. When we look at it through the camera, we'll see more clearly that the light has evened out, there's still distortion on the front. So now if we go back into edit mode in the camera view and we take the background outside the camera frame, the first thing we're going to do is give it a curve at the back of the mesh. So if you select the two points at the back of the mesh and then you hit Control B and pull out, you'll get a bevel. If you hit F6 straight away, it'll give you the opportunity to increase the segments on that bevel, create some smoothing. All that we need to do now is hit A and select all of the background and we'll subdivide it. Maybe, maybe four times is enough. And you'll see that once you've done that, you get a nice clean background and you get no distortion on the foreground. When you're happy that you have your scene, how you would like your scene, Let's look at the light in the image and then approximate that the sun lamp matches it. So I've adjusted my final lighting and I changed the HDRI to make it look a bit nicer. I played around with the, the texture of the monkey and played around with the intensity of the lamp and these are settings that you can do on your own. The advantage of doing this whole process of procedures is it's much better than using a matte shadow material because for reflective materials you can actually see the reflection of the environment in the materials. So basically you, you'll see that if you go into display only render, you see that, that you've got your scene with the parallax and everything locked in. I mean, obviously you may have some issues back there, which is to do with your scene geometry, but certainly it allows you to 
animate your scene. So if I do a little animation, which I'll just quickly set up, which is just moving the camera in slightly and past the, um, past the object, and then you'll be able to see that. Thanks for the thanks for watching.